All right, now that we've reacted live to the trailer on twitch.tv slash moxieboosted, which anyone watching the YouTube video should definitely check out, um, we're going to talk about the the news and some of the new Pokemon, and I'm going to give my opinions on these things. So I did it during the reaction, but I feel like now I can get a little bit more in depth. Uh, first of all, we actually need to talk about the lad. Girafferig has evolved. You know, people thought that Girafferig... People thought that Girafferig couldn't get any stronger. It could not get much higher. But it apparently can get much higher. Much taller, in fact. 90 base special attack, 85 base speed. The only way you were getting away with this guy is if you basically ran, like, this specific set, like, Hyper Voice, Psy Psychic, I guess, just Psychic specifically, uh, Trick Room, and, like, Protect. Because it was like an unflinchable trick room setter and I guess you could do like focus sash and there you go. That's like the only way you're using it, but so many Pokemon do that job so much better. Like with an Eviolite now, yeah, it's decently bulky if you want to like use a bad Pokemon, but now it's got an evolution. Now it's got an evolution. So let's take a look at that. Uh, the evolution, uh, let me turn on some music for the, for the viewers watching on Twitch. There you go. Sorry, we didn't have any music going, now we do. Um, a little too loud for my taste. Sorry. Okay, so the evolution's kind of cool. It's 10 foot 6, and it's the long neck Pokemon, because Giraffe Rig actually wasn't that tall before, and it's normal psychic. Uh, interestingly enough, we actually have another normal psychic Pokemon that came out in Gen 8. Technically, Legends Arceus was Gen 8. Uh, at least that's how Game Freak talks about it. Or not Gen 8, Gen 9. Um, and that was Weirdeer, so it's got some competition of Weirdeers in the game, uh, which I think it is, but it has some new abilities. Uh, actually, let's read this first. The head of its main body and the head and its tail combined. As a result of its evolution, the head of its main body and its tail and its head from its tail have become one. Both of Ferrigarath, <laughs> I'm sorry. We have Grafifi and Ferrigarath. This is just a tongue twister of a generation. Uh, Ferrigarath's brains are connected through thick nerves, increasing its psychic energy, uh, and it can emit psychic waves from the antennae on its head. It's always mindful of its surroundings, and while it can detect anger in an instant, there are times when its body cannot react as fast as its two brains can think. Uh, the thick, sturdy head from its tail provides a good defense from the head, for the head in its main body. When the head on, when the head from its tail closes its mouth, Ferrigoraf whips its long neck around in an attack that deals brutal physical damage. The force of this attack is said to be able to pulverize stone and crush steel beams. So I mean, I guess we can assume it has a bit of an attack stat. It seems to be a special attacker. Like, it, it's probably a decent special attacker. But if this thing doesn't get Iron Head, that is throwing. That is throwing. Here's my prediction. I think that this thing is going to have like 115 special attack, um, probably a decent speed, we'll probably hit like 95, and I think it's going to keep like the exact same defensive stats, maybe like its defenses will both go up by 10, but I think the attack stat has to hit at minimum 90, uh, maybe 95, I don't think they'll go 100, but it seems like this thing's just meant to be like an offensive Pokemon, I don't know how fast it's going to be, uh, but it has some cool abilities. I don't expect it to be terribly defensive. Uh, Ferrigarath's ability Kudchu is a new ability appearing in the game for the first time in these titles. When a Pokemon with this ability eats a berry, it will eat it one more time at the end of the next turn. The next turn. That's a little bit weird. Okay, so we have like Cheek Pouch, which does something different. Cheek Pouch is another berry ability where it's like, hey, uh, you eat your berry and then you get 30% health afterwards. This one is you eat your berry and not at the end of this turn, but next turn, you're going to eat it again. So my question is, what is the use case for this? Um, there are a couple of berries you could get away with this. And one would imagine that like, let's pretend this is a Ferrigarath, right? Let's say that you're running like a max speed, max special attack set. Uh, does, this, does this thing get like agility? Okay, so let's say you're using like, is it Starf? I don't know. Does this thing get Nasty Plot? Okay, let's say you're using like a Nasty Plot Salic Berry set. And you Nasty Plot this turn, 
and they knock you within Salak berry range. Then the next turn you click protect and now you outspeed because at the end of the turn you can hit it with a, a hyper voice or like a expanding force if it gets that. I don't know. That's like one of the few use cases I could see. If it does end up being pretty defensive, then yeah, that's kind of cool. Like you can hit it with like a citrus berry, which is the most reliable berry to activate on this guy. So you get 30% health and then the next turn you can go for like an iron defense if it gets that. And then at the end of that turn, you get 30% health and then you go for like body press if it has it. But yeah, no, that's that's kind of a weird ability, right? Uh, decent speed set endure plus uh, Kudchu plus stat berry could be gimmicky. It has armor tail. Rillaboom can return now. Uh, I really hope that slow. I don't know, anyways, the other ability. This is the other ability that I think is far better. And a lot of people were mostly excited about Kudchu. And I don't get why. Like I saw so many people be like, wow, this, this barrier ability is going to be so great. And I'm like, no, shut up. Um, Armor Tail is the objective best ability for this guy. Ferrigraph's ability, Armor Tail, is another new ability appearing for the game in the first time in these, or appearing for the first time in these titles. Uh, it makes the opposing Pokemon unable to use priority moves. That wording is very important and let me explain why i might sneeze soon please preemptively excuse me for that zarina bruxish Bru bruxish where are you there you are bruxish dazzling the pokemon and its allies are protected from from opposing priority moves the pokemon and its allies are protected from priority moves this is described completely differently let's go to um Queenly Majesty Bulbapedia. Da, 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 da. Not in Unite. Here. Pokemon uses a priority move. Uh, yep. The target's Pokemon, the Queenly Majesty, and its allies prevents the Pokemon from executing the move. PP is still consumed when this occurs. Pokemon cannot use move as displayed. It's, it's weird, right? So... Here's why I'm confused. So it's this says it protects the foe or it protects the Pokemon from the foe's moves where this one outright says it prevents them from using it. So the reason that's a pretty important distinction is because while these guys and this is completely hypothetical for all we know, it's just like a re, a renaming of the same ability and we already have two other ones, but it might be better. It might be outright better because like where these guys prevent like Incineroar from using fake out Ferrigarath has the potential of stopping Whimsicott from using Tailwind, a move that doesn't even target your opponent. But like, it just prevents them from being able to use priority moves at all. And that begs the question. That begs the question. When is the line drawn? Because Tailwind is a priority move, but so is Protect. And so is follow me. I would imagine it doesn't stop those, right? But maybe it stops like Tailwind, Ally Switch. It could stop follow me. I don't think it's going to stop protect. That'd be dumb. But if it does, oh my God, that's stupid. That's so stupid. Helping hand, I think that might, that might stop helping hand. And honestly, there are so many moves in this game that have priority that are like essential to winning a match. That if this thing does get those ability, it does get this ability that prevents that from being used outright. I hope its stats are worse than Giraffe Rigs. Because <laughs> that's busted as hell. Um, it's going to be, though, the same thing, but it's going to be Queen of the Majesty Dazzling. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping it's a clone, but it's it's the wording that, that concerns me. I just want to bring up the possibility that it could prevent, like, Tailwind or Prankster moves in general. My hope is that, actually, no, my hope is that it prevents, like, Prankster Tailwind. But I hope that they draw the line at plus one priority. Like past that, okay, you're, you're done. No more. We're, we're not stopping that. Or maybe it's a specific list because there are moves with specific lists of moves that they bypass. So yeah. The wording in the screenshot is identical to the sword and shield. That's true, but also it's this. This is the thing. It prevents them from using. It's not it protects from. That's why I'm concerned. And a few other people brought it up, but I wanted to bring it up. I know it's probably not going to be, but it's worth mentioning that it is worded weird. Uh, but yeah, uh, what else is there to talk about today? There is some other stuff. Um, I want to talk about these TMs. Where are the TMs thing? This is big. 
And I know that like a lot of you might be like, why are you talking about the main game? Marcos, you shouldn't care. You're a competitive channel. Uh, this part matters because it's like an accessibility thing for competitive. Uh, introducing the TM machine, a handy device that can make TMs. A technical machine or TM for short is a tool that allows Pokemon to learn new moves. In these titles, there is a piece of equipment installed at every Pokemon Center called the TM machine, which allows for trainers to make their own TMs. TMs can be attained using League Points or Materials dropped by Wild Pokemon after a battle. LP can be obtained as you advance the story or by trading materials from Pokemon. Find moves that you want your Pokemon to learn at the TM machine and try making a TM. Selection moves, blah blah blah. Okay, so basically is you can craft TMs. They added crafting. Wow. Um, and that's actually really interesting for TMs because previously, previously, we had infinite TMs with gen 7 6 and 5 i believe um and then in gen 8 we had permanent tms and then uh non reusable trs disposable trs um and the way that you got trs was annoying because you could either a buy them from vendors or b get them from raids and the stores were never consistent like it'd be oh today we have this today we have that go look for another npc they might have this they might have that it'd be a real pain it was a huge pain but now if you can just craft them and they're always available and it's not like you can only get helping hand on wednesdays or something like that uh that's pretty big i mean and it also makes it more accessible because i know a lot of people who didn't know where to get certain tms and trs and thought like, oh, well, I guess it's just not a TR. There were so many times in, in Sword and Shield where I had to Google, where do I get this TM or where do I get this TR? And it would always be like, you can only get it from, from Watt Traders. So that's really interesting. And also like, this is more or less like a move tutor thing, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if that if that's like the best comparison. It reminds me of move tutors in that you're paying points and not currency, not like the usual Pokemon currency, to learn a move, but now you get a physical copy of the move, you know? So, I mean, this brings in the possibility of like DLC move tutors, which we did see in Sword and Shield, and I expect to return in Generation 9. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think that's all the news that really matters for competitive players. I don't know if there's really anything else I can cover that isn't just casual. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you can take selfies. That's pretty cool. But yeah, no. That's that's pretty much it for the competitive. I just wanted to cover that really quick. Uh, so if you guys are watching this on YouTube, obviously, you know, leave a like, subscribe, do whatever. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.